Okay, so <clears throat> the last example I did for the p-value calculation was really a one-tailed test. And uh, I should have mentioned that. Now I'm going to do repeat the same question, but give you the two-tailed test for that. So we're going to use the same data that in 2008, we found the average salary for cafe store managers was $43,000. We took a random sample recently for 10 managers and found a sample average of $46,000 right? with a standard deviation of $4,000. So I won't calculate the probability um, just yet again. Uh, but so what I'm going to ask is basically at a alpha at a five percent significance level, do we have uh, sufficient evidence that the mean salary for Starbucks workers differ from the national average? Is there sufficient evidence? evidence the mean salary for Starbucks workers not workers but store managers you know what I mean differ from the national I think I need to improve the sensitivity of this pen. Average. So, if it differs, if we want to prove that it differs, then we want to say, you know, average salary. Uh, for Starbucks, or let's say not say up, but let's just say for Starbucks managers, differ. Uh, average salary then, if it doesn't differ, is the same. All right. Well, if it's the same, it means that the mean for Starbucks workers would be forty-three thousand dollars but if it differs then it would not be equal to forty three thousand dollars all right so that's basically a step one step two the test statistic as we've already done in the last case because this sample size is small and sigma is unknown and we are interested in, in hypothesizing about the population mean then we will use t is equal to x bar minus mu S over root N and the degrees of freedom is N minus 1. That's step 2. I'm just going to save some space. I'm going to put step 3 right here and say we're going to just use the p-value rule. If the p-value is less than 5%, reject HO because we've already set alpha to 5%. And then the fourth step is just to calculate the p-value. So we've already done this calculation, but I'll just show it here again, which is 48,000 minus 43,000, 4,000, which is S, divided by the square root of 10, which gives us 3.16. So we are interested in finding that p-value. Now, if you think of the definition of a p-value, the p-value is the probability of observing the sample that we found, in other words 3.16, or values that are even more extreme. So let's just draw this for a moment. Right. 
so I'm going to use the so the t distribution. So here we are. The, it turns out that our 48,000 translates to a 3.16. So if we say what is as extreme or more extreme than this value, then you could tell me as extreme or more extreme as this. But let's look at the hypothesis. It said we are being asked uh, whether or not, or we've been asked to show whether or not that mean differs from 43,000. Well, if you differ from 43,000, you could have values that are much larger than 43,000 or values that are much smaller than 43,000, which is why it is a two-tailed test. So, because the p-value states that it is the probability of observing the sample evidence or evidence that's even more extreme, well, what's equivalent to this? We could have found a sample that was so small that we got the exact same t-value, but on the left side, so 3.16, we could have found that here. Actually, so it's my blue. And um, this would be part of the p-value as well. So the p-value is not just one tail, it's actually two tails. And so we have to add both of those things, okay, to get the p-value. So the p-value in this case, go back to black, p-value would be the probability of, ob of obtaining a t-value less than 3.16 plus the probability of obtaining a t value greater than or equal to 3.16. All right. So both of those together give you the p value. Since the t distribution is symmetrical, we only need to calculate one of them. So the p value is twice the probability of t being greater than or equal to 3.16, all right? But we already know that this part from our last calculation um, is between half a percent and um, is between half a percent and uh, one percent. So twice that would be between one percent and two percent. That's what we have to do. So this piece right here, to so p-value, if you want to go see over 2, half the p-value lies between 0 0.01 and 0 0.05. We found that earlier, which means, so if we multiply through by 2, to get rid of the two uh, beneath the p-value, then this would becomes, so multiply everything by two, this becomes 0 0.01 p-value 0.02. And here's our p-value right here. Now, since the p-value is less than 0 0.02, it is obviously also less than 0 0.05. So then in our decision, step five, we'll see p-value is less than 0 0.05, right? We reject HL. And so we conclude that Starbucks managers, uh, not Starbucks managers, but that the mean salary for Starbucks managers differ from 43,000, right? Mean salary for Starbucks managers differ from $43,000. Can we be wrong? Yes. What kind of error can we commit? Type 1 error. What's our real probability, our observed significance? With respect to committing type 1 error, uh, that is between 
0.01 and 0.02. So actually, if we had reduced alpha to say 0.02, then we would still reject the null hypothesis. So that means we could actually set our risk limit to even smaller than the 5% that we set before. We could set it right down to the actual p-value itself, okay? Which in this case is less than 2%, but greater than 1%. So hopefully this actually helps. This was a, a two-tailed case. Um, prior to that, I did a one-tailed case. Now, I know you might be asking a question, do we ever fail to reject the null hypothesis? Absolutely, we do. Just so happens that the examples I chose, we rejected the null hypothesis. Okay, so hopefully this helps with p-value. Remember, it is connected to Chapter 7 in the book. And if you have not been reviewing the book, it might explain why you're still having difficulty understanding the concept, but hopefully if you have a chance to review chapter 7 and realize that we're applying what we learn in chapter 7 in hypothesis testing, you will find it a lot easier. Okay, thank you.